It is Sunday, May 1st, 2022. Now we have already survived three weeks of the Johnny Depp Amber Heard defamation lawsuit. They said this was going to be a six week situation and that means that we are about to head into week four. With them predicting it to be a six week trial, Johnny has taken up three weeks of this trial and we can only assume that Johnny's side of things is about to come to a close and Amber's side is about to take center stage, which means we need to go over Amber Heard's witness list. Amber Heard's witness list, or as I call it, a wish list, because this is a state's civil suit, is three pages long. Now, some of these names you will recognize, some of them we've seen before, but either way, we're gonna hash it out one by one. Now, first on her list is herself, Amber Laura Heard, set to testify in person, and rumor has it, allegedly, supposedly, I don't know shit about fuck, that Amber will be testifying first for her defense. We shall see. Next on the list is Johnny Depp, also set, of course, to testify in person which makes total sense, obviously. Let me just go ahead and apologize in advance. My deepest condolences, because I am absolutely going to botch a lot of these names. I'm terrible with this game. I'm terrible. I could never be an announcer because you cannot trust me to announce names right, so I apologize in advance. But next on the list is Adir Abergale. And Adir Abergale is Amber Heard's hairstylist. And if we look at declarations made by Amber Heard's makeup artist from the UK trial, we get a little insight as to why Adir might be testifying. In Melanie's declaration for the UK trial, it read as follows. The first time I saw the physical evidence of Johnny's abuse was before Amber was scheduled to appear on The Late Show with James Corden. Amber and I were supposed to go bowling the night before, but Amber told me that she could not join because she had been in a bad fight with Johnny. I came over to Eastern Building to apply makeup before her TV appearance, and as I walked into her kitchen, I saw writing on the countertop in gold marker. Attached here to as exhibit one is a true and correct copy of a picture that depicts the writing I saw that night. I also saw a number of Amber's possessions had been smashed or destroyed. When I saw Amber, I immediately noticed that she had a split lip and a bruise near her eye. I also saw that there was a chunk of hair missing from her head. Amber told me that Johnny had tried to suffocate her. Throughout the time I was applying makeup on Amber's injuries, we discussed whether it would be possible to keep the fact of Johnny's violence a secret. Amber repeatedly told me that she did not want to expose this part of her life to the public that she was considering canceling the appearance altogether. I also remember that Adir Abergale, Amber's hairstylist, was working on Amber's hair while I did Amber's makeup. Adir and I both discussed how we had noticed that Amber was missing a chunk of hair. And Adir noted that he was being careful to work around the missing chunk and to cover it up. Meanwhile, I was working on Amber's makeup and distinctly remember having no choice but to use bright red lipstick that day because it was the only way to cover the injury on her lip. I was also able to cover the bruise adjacent to Amber's eye using makeup. 
After I finished applying her makeup and Adir finished with Amber's hair, we all went to the studio for Amber's appearance on James Gordon's show. While there, Amber turned it on and hid the emotions that she had shared with us at her penthouse. As I have seen her act on numerous other occasions to prevent others from learning about her troubles with Johnny. However, looking back on pictures of Amber from that appearance, I can still see where Amber was bruised and that Amber's lip had been injured. So, uh, dear Abigail is Amber's hairstylist, and I'm assuming that he's going to be discussing those injuries, and Melanie is also on the list, and she will be a by deposition, so she will be one of those pre-recorded videos that we've been seeing them play in the courtroom. Next up, we have a Julian Ackert, which from a quick Google search tells me that he is a managing director. Julian has over 15 years of consulting and project management experience in the technology and litigation industries. He has extensive experience with forensic data collection, computer forensic analysis, creating and implementing preservation and collecting. He's a computer forensic guy. That's all you need to know. But another thing you need to know is that Julian Ackert is familiar with this case, as Julian Ackert appears to have been retained for the UK trial by The Sun to assess the integrity and validity of both electronic photograph data as well as audio recording data. So I think it's obvious where they'll be going with that. We then have Dr. Laurel Anderson, who is a familiar face. We have already heard from Dr. Laurel Anderson. She was the marriage counselor that worked with both Johnny as well as Amber Heard. And again, she's on here as a deposition witness, so it will be more footage from pre-recorded depositions that we have already seen from Dr. Anderson already throughout this trial. Then we have a Katherine Arnold. Now, assuming that I have the right Katherine Arnold, she appears to consider herself the entertainment expert. Now, I'm sitting here perusing her website, and should you feel the need to do a little self-sleuthing and peruse the website yourself, I will link it below so that you can do that. But according to her website, she says that she offers litigation support. She has over 20 years hands-on experience in feature film and TV development, production, international sales and finance, and having worked both as a producer and executive, she understands the inner workings of the entertainment industry. Basically, she knows the entertainment world. And it says under the services tab that she does expert witness testimony on things like economic damages and losses, film finance, film production, film licensing, international film sales, intellectual property, and motion picture distribution. Now, this is my personal opinion. You take it however you want to take it. Clearly, this woman is more than qualified. She's been working in the industry for over 20 years. She is clearly more than qualified to be an expert witness. But I personally don't particularly love when people advertise that you can specifically hire them as an expert witness. I think that it makes it look as if your opinion can be purchased. You, you know, you're not supposed to be able to do that. But. Okay, so now that we're all on the same page, I don't, you know, if someone has a job and they end up one way or another being hired or retained to do something that gets them in court or they are retained because of who they are and what they do to be an expert, that's one thing. But I, like I said, I just don't love personally me. I personally don't love when people are out there advertising that they're for hire as an expert witness. Now, I'm not saying that she's gonna be an expert witness 
in this trial. I'm just looking at our website and thinking out loud. You take that however you want to, process that however you want to. But that is who Katherine Arnold is, assuming I have the right one. Then we have an Amy Banks, which I am assuming is Dr. Amy Banks. And I am assuming that because if you remember, when Dr. Curry was testifying, she mentioned that she reviewed documents, Miss Hurd's medical records by Dr. David Kipper, her prior mental health treatment records. I believe I reviewed records from Dr. Amy Banks. So I'm assuming that's going to be one and the same. And according to Dr. Amy Banks's website, she is also a published author and she appears to do a lot of work in relationships and mental health for women. So that's Dr. Amy Banks. Ellen Barkin is on the witness list here and uh, news to me, she used to date Johnny Depp. Learn something new every day. Now, I only know Ellen Barkin as the roles that I've seen her in. She's the mom on Animal Kingdom, which is a badass show that I watch. And, you know, she's a whole ass vibe, but I never knew that she dated Johnny Depp. Allegedly, supposedly, I don't know shit about fuck. Apparently, Barkin said that Depp threw a bottle of wine across a hotel room during a fight with his friends. Now, I didn't hear Ellen Barkin say this. I've not seen a statement signed by Ellen Barkin that says that, but apparently she said that, and that's why she's on the witness list for Amber Heard. I don't know, but she is on there, and they did used to date. Isaac Baruch, everyone's BFF, is on Amber Heard's witness list, and that should be no surprise because when he finished testifying for Johnny, they mentioned that he was subject to recall, meaning that Heard could call him back up to the witness stand, so he wasn't allowed to watch anything about this trial or talk about it with anyone. So Isaac's on there, and they have Isaac as a deposition witness, not in person. I don't know. Robin Baum is on here for a deposition witness. And I mean, allegedly, supposedly back in 2011, Robin Baum hooked up with Johnny Depp. So I guess, I guess that's that. We have a Lisa Bean on the list. And according to court documents, Amber Heard stated, a day or so later, I wanted to follow up the telephone concussion check, so I went to Dr. Kemper's office to get an examination. I saw a nurse named Lisa Bean who followed me out to my car saying that she could see that I was in trouble or something similar and that I should call her if anything like this happened again, but in court... They said that Lisa Bean was not a nurse. She was a receptionist for Dr. Kemper. So Lisa Bean was employed by Dr. Kemper and she's on this list. We have an Adam Berkovici on the list. And Adam appears to be a retired Los Angeles Police Department lieutenant. Judging by the video deposition clip that was played by Johnny Depp's team that was featuring Amber Heard's attorneys questioning the responding officers to the 2016 domestic call to Johnny and Amber's penthouse, I can only assume that he is on this witness list to testify about police procedures. I mean, they have him checked on here as a potential in-person witness. Sean Bett is on Amber's witness list, and we've already heard from Sean Bett. He will be a familiar face. He is a member of Johnny Depp's security team and a retired police officer. Now, 
Sean Bett is also one of the members from Johnny Depp's security team that happened to be with Johnny at the penthouse on May 21st when police were called to the penthouse over a domestic dispute and Johnny's team claims the entire thing was a hoax. They literally put that in legal documentation. And Sean Bett has testified that he did not see any injuries on Amber and he does not believe that anything happened on May 21st. There is an Alan S. Blostein. He is on here as a deposition witness and I believe that would be Dr. Alan S. Blostein, who is a psychiatrist in Los Angeles. And I believe that Amber consulted Dr. Blostein between 2012 and 2016. There is a Jacob Bloom on here, whom I believe to be Jacob Bloom, as in Johnny Depp's ex-attorney, that he sued for malpractice. There is a Natasha Brooks on the list, and she is associated with Art of Elysium. She was also subpoenaed by Johnny Depp's team, and from the looks of social media, it appears that she knows Whitney Hurd, Amber's sister, as I am looking at a picture of the two of them hugging on Instagram. Christian Carino is on the list. He is a very familiar face. We saw him just last week during week number three. He is a talent agent that worked for both Johnny and Amber, and he was quite funny. I think his most memorable moment was something along the lines of telling Amber if she didn't want her personal business to be in the news, not to date famous men. <laughs> Basically insinuating that. She herself is not important enough to make headline news, but the men that she dates are. <laughs> For the sake of everyone's attention span, I think it's best if we pause right here so we have completed page one of Amber Heard's witness list for this defamation lawsuit, and we will come back and cover everything you need to know about who's on page two and page three.